It sure is an unusually warm autumn. So today, I think the beans will go. Let's get to it. Hey there, Buck. You got used to the Christmas tree? That's good, Buck. So Buck got used to his Christmas gifts, so I'm happy for that. So what we're going to do today is, uh, today I'm going to try to start running the beans if we can. So that is the goal. So I need to get everything prepped and ready. But first, I need to drop off this uh, bobcat here. The wifey thought we just went out and bought this uh, Honda here and we are going to uh, end up taking this bobcat back uh, trading it in or selling it basically to the dealer all right so we got the bobcat loaded up we're gonna take it in our beautiful ranger truck here i just love the looks of this old ford truck so in the sound of it too of course it's really surprised that the neighbor still has his wheat over there uh oh well but we are hopefully going to get into soybeans today. Uh, the corn is still too wet, Jim's corn that is. Uh, our corn is definitely too wet for our drying or our money pocket. It costs a lot of money for uh, drying corn. Especially with our low budget or our just having our small farm. So we need to make max profit out of our all of our uh, crops we have this year to uh, pay off all of our loans. I'm looking forward to uh, helping uh, Jim uh, harvest his corn though. He definitely got one heck of an operation going up there. Alright, so we will drop this off here and then uh, head back and uh, get our harvester ready. Just driving down. So we did sell the, the Bob the Bobcat uh, little uh, UTV for a good 15000 so that'll help out on the farm. Uh, we still have to pay for the Honda though, so really it's just uh, helping fund the Honda bill. Alright, so we are going to leave this right here, and then we got to get everything running. Truck always takes a while to shut off. So I think I'm going to get the semi started up, warm it up at least. Let the air pressure build in that. All right, so we are taking this semi over here just to uh, start. So we got a lot of uh, equipment to move over. I think I'm going to take it to the end of the road here and then turn it down so that way I don't have to turn with a full load, that is. Alright, so the air is built up in this, so we are going to take this along the long way. Just make a loop around our uh, cornfield here. Drive through our gate and around and back. While we're driving over here, I, I hope you all get to spend the holidays with your uh, family and friends or loved ones, whoever it may be. But hope you. I wish you all a uh, Merry Christmas if that's your belief, or in a Happy New Year's. But thank you all for uh, sticking with me and watching my videos and supporting my channel. It is uh, a great honor to me to keep posting for all, you all and to post on uh, Squad Farms. Alright, so Beans, this is, uh, let's just say, the bigger tank of the two. We're going to put this in front, so it gets to one-up the little uh, grain truck there. Alright, so now it is time to start up all... The harvester over here so we got the harvester ready the other day so it's all ready to go uh oh i don't have much room i gotta you gotta squeeze through here there we go now i get in 
Alright. Start up. Head is all greased. Everything is good to go. We're going to be using our new grain cart we purchased over there. Alright, so we're just going to go a little ways here. So it looks like we're getting about 100 bushels an acre. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good for this area. It's actually uh, outstanding for this area. Even our uh, cattle over there, they're impressed, you can tell. Running along here, so we currently have about 30 bushels in the tank, so we're just starting very slowly getting this outside pass here. So this is an odd shaped field, so gonna have to beans this is uh first time taking this uh harvester out this year i'm gonna have to make sure all the settings are right in it before i uh really get to going here all right so let's see what we're doing here so we are putting everything in a little swath here so we are going to be bailing this up uh possibly selling it or just using it on the ranch i don't know for sure yet I'm not getting a huge crop. Uh, this is definitely some, gonna be some stimmy, uh, kind of nasty uh, straw, but this will be good for just regular bedding. We probably won't bed this for uh, our calves, but just the normal bedding you require per year. All right, so the good thing about putting a swath like that, you can really tell if you're getting uh, any shell loss or anything like that. Uh, says we are running just about 15%, uh, which is right at our my comfort zone crossover line. So I think uh, we're going to keep going and keep running. I'm going to probably make at least one path around this field first before I really get a determination what we're going to do. So as you can see this is one heck of an angle we're going at which is good for this harvester works pretty good at a slight angle when it's harvesting. Uh, certain harvesters uh, don't take the angle as well, don't thrash the, the crop as well at the angle or runs to one side of the rotor but this old harvester does pretty good at it. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this to Oregon with us. This is definitely a scenic feel right here. So you got this uh, nice little tree cro grove over here to the side. You got everything looking per tech. So that was our dinger. So basically we are at 50% full. So this thing holds just over uh, 300 bushels in the little grain tank extension we have here so harvesting really easily right now I'm really impressed by how much uh, horsepower this uh, old uh, harvester has going up these uh, this big hill a lot of harvesters struggle when it's trying to take in crop and going up this type of uh, side of the hill definitely this harvester pretty Holes through it, big John Deere engine in the back. It's doing great. That is the tree this place is uh, named after, the Lone Oak. So kind of odd, this whole area is named after the Lone Oak, but uh, means it's obviously uh, such rich recognition. The the farmer leaves it in the field over there, plants around it. So this is our 9650 STS. So we've had this harvester for a while so far. 
Uh, I don't know if we're going to be harvesting the same fields when we're working for with Jim. Uh, it looks like we just filled up right there. So I am still waiting for uh, my cousin to show up. She is going to be running the grain cart. But until she shows up, uh, I guess I'm going to have to be uh, putting this, uh, hauling this back to the semi. It's kind of... We're kind of fortunate because we ended pretty close to the semi right there, so we're not too far off. And we got this big area that we chopped off right here to put into our uh, truck here. So we are unloaded now. Get back over here and start harvesting. I need to call the cousin and get her behind over here. She is late, like always. She's probably at Starbucks. All right, just harvesting by the trucks here. So we're kind of short-handed here. We're just going to have a couple uh, people harvesting today. So uh, I think we should be all right. Uh, beans, we're just in beans today. So beans, uh, you definitely can uh, go a long ways before you fill up your tank. But even though we are getting uh, a good, uh, what is this, uh, 100 plus bushels per acre, which is awesome. Definitely what we needed to pay the bills this year. Uh, but you just don't get the same type of yields you do when you're uh, harvesting corn when you do beans. So I did call my cousin, finally got a hold of her. She just slept in like always. Uh, such a millennial. But she's on her way, gonna get here, and hopefully uh, I can teach her how to run the grain cart. Yeah, should be a challenge. I think I just saw, yep, like, you probably can't see it, but cousin just pulled up there. She's at the end of the field, so once we go unload this uh, bin load, we will get her started in the, the grain cart. So it's going to be a little bit of a learning curve for her, so got to give her a little bit of time. So probably the best time to learn is in soybeans. So you don't really have to rush too much. You just have to stay awake, basically, in the cab. Especially only dealing with one harvester, so. All right, so we got uh, 7140 on the grain cart here. Good old harvest, good old tractor. Definitely just like what I grew up driving. So we're gonna teach her, basically, how to unload here. So, that was kind of a fail, so I think I will probably run the grain cart. I'm going to try to teach my cousin how to run the harvester here. So it's just, I think, maybe a little bit easier because this thing, basically, you can just run on GPS, uh, point it one direction. It has head leveling, so uh, I can monitor everything from my the cap of the... 7142 just to make sure uh, she isn't getting a lot of bean loss and I could uh, also walk a little bit more make sure uh, the losses are correct uh, right now we are harvesting around I did while I was trying to teach her pull out the Vermeer baler so we are going to try to uh, try I say to uh, bail some of this up uh, Get a little bit of straw. We got a big old dairy we need to basically keep up with. 
So I think I'm going to get to about the first load here on this uh, harvester, and then I'm probably going to hand the reins over to my cousin a little while. Now, we will run the grain cart. I like running the harvester, but sometimes it's just the way it goes. That way I guess I could uh, run the semis back too, not have to uh, stop the harvester while I'm unloading the, the trucks, because she's definitely not going to do that. Alright, so she took over. She's down over there. Uh, man, this is bumpy running in this thing. So I think I'm going to probably meet her somewhere on this uh, straightaway here. So we're just sitting here waiting for her to show up. This is what you do a lot, especially when you're harvesting beans. So... I'm going to walk this area a little bit. The good thing is a lot of this, you could really tell what your head lost is and what out of the back of the harvester you lose because of the, how we're putting it into swaths here. Looks like we're good. We're probably about one bushel per acre in head loss and out of the back of the harvester, so not completely off the line but we could do a better that's for sure just to make sure she isn't doing nothing crazy I gotta keep a close eye on her all right she's turning the corner here looks like we need to get started here there she comes up unloaded into us right there unloaded about 200 bushels there so we're gonna do a lot of swaths around the outside edge here just I told her to do at least five so she has plenty of room for turning around that's one of the harder things to do with a harvester especially when you first start driving it because there's so many blind spots in it so while I was waiting for uh, my cousin to harvest I started bailing here we will shut this old girl down, so uh, shut off the lights. Uh, so we started bailing, so we're bailing up the straw. The only real difference is the bales are going to be a little bit smaller just because of the compaction issue with the bales. Uh, I didn't want to make them huge and have a risk of them burning or something like that. So we're just going to make the bales a little bit smaller instead of the normal uh, six foot uh, bales we bale. I'm sure she should be about ready. So we will see where she is at. Start this old uh, good old magnum up. So we have, we're not getting the best crop off of the straw so it's definitely not like a crop of wheat or barley or oats but you get a little bit of uh, some straw left over so it's not the best straw for bedding at least for calves anyways but it ain't terrible so uh, we need every last straw we could get this year because we don't have much uh, wheat ground or barley ground so is getting this little uh, teardrop done over here it looks like yeah she's leaving a little bit on the corners but I, I prefer her not having to uh, turn around with this uh, harvester just because I don't want her hitting anything could be very bad for us Let's see if we can uh, unload going up this hill so she unloaded on us so uh, that harvester definitely has a lot of power being able to unload going up a hill like that so it's definitely a freaking beast of a John Deere don't know why she must be having issues I don't know why she keeps unfolding her auger back and forth leave it in it's not hard all right, we still don't have a full load for this uh, Brent 18800. 
This is uh, a pretty uh, good operation, I think. So, if this kind of looks familiar, this would be a star lately, so a corn star type rig. But beautiful rig, if I have to say so myself. Though the corn star is recently upgraded, but I still like the 7140. Let's see, beans, uh, we have only one harvester. We could probably keep up with baling and uh, running grade cart and unloading the trucks. That's probably stretching it a little bit too much there. All right, so we're still uh, bailing. I think I probably, I tried to do another round here, bailing, uh, because I got tired of waiting basically for my cousin, but it appears that uh, she is uh, loaded now. So we are definitely a little bit behind, so she has to wait a little bit for us. So uh, I think it's, okay because I want to get this straw off right away just because beans were a farmhand working for Jim and all that stuff don't want to wait too long for this whole operation because it might be uh, weeks before we're able to get this uh, straw bailed up otherwise we uh, won't do it at all so I think it's important we get it bailed up right away so even if she's waiting a little bit, we don't have a lot of uh, soybeans to worry about. So. so now we have the outside three headlands, or almost three headlands going. So this is basically our third lap around the whole field. Uh, this old, uh, this is a 7210, is just running perfectly. I'm pulling this old Vermeer baler. So we are basically going to pull up over here by the grain cart, go catch my cousin really quickly, unload it, and then probably uh, just jump right back in here and try to make another round. It's working out okay, I guess. Not great. Uh, just depends on if we're going to have to unload them trucks or not. Alright, let's start this old girl up. Get it pulled up over there. Alright, so we are going to go over here and fill up our good old semi, hopefully. Pull that auger there. The only thing bad about this uh, grain cart that I don't like is that I uh, can't really see that auger very good. So we're still unloading, so this isn't the fastest unload uh, grain cart out there, but it works alright, I guess. I definitely like the chrome exhaust they have on this uh, tractor, so I know the ones of my childhood just had the black exhaust, but the farmer prior to me must have upgraded to a chrome exhaust tip, which kind of looks nice on it. Alright, so we filled up the semi. 
Go back and put a few bushels in this uh, old dump truck. All right, so we're gonna park this over here, and then jump into the baler here quickly and try to keep that running. Got multiple tasks today. Looks like she's doing the up and down rows right now. I think she probably should have just kept on going around the field, but oh well. She isn't running into anything. Hopefully she can go around the bales on the outside here. There she goes. She's still going, so being she's taking such uh, short rows, I think we'll be able to hopefully uh, get some done in front of her or get some of this bailed. As you see, we got three uh, rounds with this baler already, so we are being super efficient, that's for sure. California weather, it's like 90 degrees It's making me hot and he has the same effect on me It's just something about the way that he's making me feel My insides are out, I just wanna shout his name Ah, oh, my body's giving up on me Cause I don't know what to do with my fingertips Ah, oh, I wanna run through his hair But I'm trying not to stare, mm -mm. I get a little starstruck when I see him Shaking from the urge of being with him I act a little dumber when I try to get his number I'm so nervous that I'm losing grip of myself Ah, oh, my body's giving up on me Cause I don't know what to do with my fingertips Ah, oh, I wanna run through his hair But don't stare I get a little starstruck when I see him I couldn't hit him even if I tried So we almost got all the headlands done So we are flying around this field. Uh, hopefully I could get everything harvested, everything put in the bin, and the bales picked up. That would be a great success for the day. Especially when we're just dealing with two people here. Not worried about picking up every last little bit of bale or piece of bale here. As you can see, we almost caught up to my cousin. So we have been flying around this field. So doing these in rows kind of made up for some uh, loss uh, time. She's ahead of us, but I think she's about full. So being she's doing the up and down rows, she really didn't have to unload too much. So that's why I could just stay in the baler and catch up to her. I don't know why she uh, ended up swapping over there, so she did this row. And then she uh, ended up swapping. So it looks like she is actually full, so we are gonna run over here to the grain cart and unload her here quickly. Start this old girl up. It's like basically her last row right here. Alright, so she is off again. Go over here and park this. Actually, we'll probably just go unload it into our uh, dump truck right away. And then uh, start bailing. So it looks like all we did really is fill up both of these trucks, so we got about a hundred bushels per acre. This is not the biggest field, so don't really need the semi when it comes to uh, soybeans, but we uh, brought it over here anyway. So. so all we got is four more rows, so my cousin, 
she actually just finished up. She left a few soybeans in the field, but not like right there in front of us. Uh, she's over there unloading into the grain cart. But other than that, this field is done. Still got one more field of soybeans left. But I think this will be our only field we do today. I don't know if we're going to... Uh, harvest the other soybeans before we start helping out Jim or not we'll see how uh, the crops dry down the last the other uh, field was planted later so I can tell that's not gonna go already so we're gonna have to wait probably a week at least maybe two all right so I'm gonna take this back just driving this back. I already picked up all the bales. Everything is basically almost done. I'm gonna go park this in the shed. I gotta unload the semis. I gotta unload the bale trailer. So we got a little bit less than 35 bales. Something like, uh, like 33. Something like that. So back this up in here. Problem is baler is so big can't even see what you're doing all right we got that parked in there so now we got to run back over here we got everything running so I'm probably gonna let my cousin cut out of here but she helped drive around while I was picking up all the bales so uh, yeah I guess I'll haul this uh, load of bales over to our bale stack area of course I used my uh, Ford Ranger really uh, liking this truck so far so we have we basically stack all of our bales over here by our cattle so we have a big stack area by our dairy cattle here so we unloaded all the bales now we just gotta unload our semis here but thank you all for watching and I will see you later here in Oregon Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, and share and subscribe. See you next time.